What's going on? We back. Motor City Sports Talk. We in the building talking some Detroit Pistons. And I think I might have spoke on this theory that I that I had for the Pistons uh, to get rid of Blake Griffin. Now, we know he traded on Blake Griffin. I was kind of understanding where it was coming from um, with the Blake Griffin trade, trying to get Cease in the stands and, you know, trying to be more exciting. It didn't work. Not saying it can't work. Uh, maybe Reggie Jackson give him a little bit more energy. Now, I think Reggie Jackson has two more years on his contract. I think Blake Griffin got like four or five more on his contract or something like that. But um, it sounds like Paul George ain't coming back to the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I said earlier this year, or earlier, you know, a little bit earlier than now, that the Pistons, you know, to get up under that Blake Griffin contract, which I hope somebody else comes in. They fire Stan Van Gundy, fires the front office, and brings somebody fresh in, which we'll talk about in another video. But I hope. You know that 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 would happen. If, you know that happened. You can instantly shoot Blake Griffin out to Oklahoma City for a first or shit a second round draft pick. You know they would have the cap space. They might have to send a player or two back. Um, you know, but I would instantly shoot him out there. And the reason that works, if you don't know, Blake Griffin is from Oklahoma City, and uh, basically the Thunder, unless they did a signing trade for Paul George to the L.A. Lakers, um, it. it this would make sense. This would make big sense. I mean, it will give Russell Westbrook another guy in, 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 in uh, Oklahoma City to compete with. And a guy that really don't need the ball. I know Blake Griffin of late is trying to play that point power forward, that point forward. <laughs> but Oklahoma City, he won, He would just have to play off Russell Westbrook. And I, I think he's a better player. When he's playing off of Chris Paul, um, he was a better player. And then, you know, then you could do a rotation as well where you could let him do his thing with the ball and have Russell Westbrook on the bench. I think Paul George was a good fit for Oklahoma City. He wasn't an alpha male uh, type of uh, player, you know, kind of like, you know, uh, in Miami where they had Dwayne Wade and LeBron or Kyrie and LeBron. Kyrie grew into an alpha male type of player, and they butted his. Blake Griffin and Westbrook wouldn't be like that. I mean, they can run and gun all night. You know, Russell Westbrook could set him up enough. But Paul George, he wasn't an alpha male type of guy either. You know, he was never aggressive enough. Paul George don't have killer instinct, and that's the biggest issue with Paul George. Um, and that was perfect because Russell Westbrook had all the killer they needed. And then, you know, if Carmelo didn't get phased out, I mean, he had the killer to make up for the killer that Paul George let. You know, and if this trade was the fact that we had to take Carmelo Anthony back in the trade, which I believe he has one more year. If he opts in for $28 million, I do it. That's one year Carmelo, you know, you got to deal with and that, that becomes an attractive contract as well, too. Come playoff time, if you can get Carmelo Anthony playing well, um, you know, that's that's key. But that's not even, like, the big fact about it. Because $28 million, you know, people, other teams are looking to clear cap space to get other players in the summer. So if you're able to get a couple good stars or good players with that contract, kind of fill out your roster and give you some depth. Teams will give it to you, but like you know, they know they're in a running for, let's say, hypothetically, at LeBron James. Even though you know he probably sign a two one year two year deal next year, I don't know where. I'm just using him as a hypothetical. You can clear twenty eight million dollars in cash space if you take a one year deal with Melo only have you know one year left and twenty eight million. They give you some players, and that'll kind of be your depth. So the Pistons got to kind of maneuver that. You know, I wouldn't be mad at taking Carmelo. You getting rid of a four year contract, whatever Blake Griffin got left. For a one-year contract of $28 million and come to trade deadline, that's going to be an attractive contract because somebody else is going to have $28 million in cash space if you can get give them Carmelo Anthony and you can give them some play, you can get some players back. So, I mean, or even if you don't move Carmelo, you have $28 fucking million in cash space. So that's a win-win, you know. And I know a lot of people don't like the Blake Griffin trade, you know, and it still could work. But at the end of the day, if you have a golden opportunity to run that man over to Oklahoma City, you do it. You can send him back home. He can be happy. Russell Westbrook will be happy with playing with Blake Griffin. And um, if you got to take Ravello back on, you can take him back on. Fuck it. Why not? Like one year, if he opts in for $28 million, I just named the possibilities of what you can do with that. Um, like I said, the Pistons not going over fast, you know. And I was just watching an old Pistons documentary about, you know, um, how they hired the right guy in Jack McCloskey and how um, – uh, Dick Vontel told that Bill Davidson, the owner, that you got to get a basketball mind that can make the everyday decisions in the Pistons front office. And the Pistons got to find that, man. They got to find somebody that's competent, that know talent, that know how to evaluate talent, that have a good scouting team, that can that can evaluate the Kyle Kuzmas, who can find the Donovan Mitchells, that can find the Giannis Akapupos. They find those type of guys that's middle in the draft. 
But not only that, they can make the right decision at the top of the draft because the Pistons are going to have to tear it down and be bad, man. And be really, really bad. And not only if they trade for Carmelo and have to, or the, the Thunder makes them take Carmelo for that one year, $28 million back. Next year, you have Reggie Jackson that's on his last year, after next year, I mean. So you got two expiring contracts back to back. You got Melo next year if you take him on, then you got Reggie Jackson the year after that. And the Pistons can trade those for draft picks and trade those for fill in players that can build bench depth and get some really, really solid starters and role players, man. That's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to tear it down and be terrible, bad, you know, real, real bad. And I know Andre Drummond feel like he probably wasting his prime. You might have to trade him as well, too, for some other draft pick. They have to accumulate draft picks. They have to do what Philly done. They have to do what Boston done. They got somebody like that in their front office that can acquire the draft picks, you know, and build from, or out of the draft and build with depth, you know, by trade, by building, you know, good players. And they have to tear it down, man. And trading Blake Griffin is the start of it. Reggie Jackson, the year after next, when that contract becomes a starting contract, and possibly turning Dre Drummond, you might have to do that. You know, because I know he don't want to waste his prime being a part of a franchise that's continuing losing. And by the time they get to the point of being, uh, okay, a good team and get a team on the rise, like a Minnesota or a Pelicans or or or, or, or a younger Golden State Warriors, and then he all old and beat up, and he, he mentally, you know, you know, messed up by, by going through some of the using, losing years. So um, they just have to be bad, man. You know, they've been terrible. I was, before Isaiah, they was terrible. You know, in the 90s, they was terrible. Before the bad boys, they was terrible. Not after the bad boys. It's time to, you know, end that cycle and and do what you got to do and make those trades. You know, acquire draft picks. Move up, move down in the draft. And be very, very bad. That's what I have to do. It'd be a terrible team, man, to get great talent. You know, because it's hard in free agency to compete with Miami, to compete with Boston, to compete with New York, to compete with, with L.A., you know, compete with Texas now. That's in Houston is a, is a banging community. Houston, I think, will be the third largest city over Chicago by 2020. So it's a lot of, uh, you know, cool destinations to compete with, you know. And you got to draft these guys here and show them that Detroit is a world-class organization. It's not a bad time, you know. And, you know, a lot of people would understand this. You can't just build on the fly. This is not the NFL with where one good draft and one good offseason could just turn it around. This ain't MLB where, where, where's your, 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 uh, where your uh, farm system, you got some guys coming up, up there and they can save it, or some good free agent acquisition, some good trades, and just turn it around at the drop of a dime. This is NBA. The talent level in the draft and, and, and the talent level ain't that deep. You know, you got to do, you got to be bad and you got to get the top elite talent and you can't miss when you're in the middle of the rounds or the middle of the lottery or late in the draft. You got to hit on those picks, you got to find those veteran. So you got to find those good, good junior and senior players coming out of college, those good overseas players. And not only that, you got to have good coaching and the guy who has a system like Brad Stevenson, Greg Popovich, to really turn it around. So let me know what y'all think. Where to see sports talk? We out.